Hey, happy Black Friday. Cadiz, it's that most wondrous of days where consumers the world over come together in solidarity and spunk the last of their savings on old out of production tat that's cluttering up retailers' warehouses, leading to intense bitter regret just a few days later when they realise they no longer have enough cash to buy wee Billy that £300 Lego set he really wanted for Christmas. Sorry, Billy, Santa didn't get you the Lego Squid Game set that you really had your heart set on, but hey, here's a rice cooker. It was 50% off from Curry's. Oh, stop your blubbing, you wee sh bag. Or next year, Santa's taking a shovel to the reindeer stalls to fill your stocking. Anyway, even though Black Friday has been actually going on for about three bloody weeks already, I've rounded up some of the least rubbish tech deals for you fine folk at home. And as usual, we've got some half arse tech news and enough viewer comments to fill Santa's sack about three times over. So enough of this bollocks, jingle me. Techspert Weekly. Okay, yeah, so let's kick off with the Black Friday deals, though it does feel like we need some sort of proper intro or jingle. You'd all have a good jingle. Um, something that exudes panic and rage and despair and regret. All of the human emotions that Black Friday really sort of conjures up. Oh, Christ! Black Friday! Uh... Yeah, that'll do. Now, of course, Black Friday can be utterly overwhelming, especially now it seems to stretch over pretty much a full month rather than just a single day. But what you've got to remember with Black Friday deals is an awful lot of them are utter bollocks. For example, over on Xiaomi's website, there are loads of deals lasting until Sunday the 28th, and you might be tempted, but definitely shop around first. For example, you'll find 30 quid off the excellent Redmi Note 10 Pro, now just £239, but you will already find it for a tenner less than that, on Amazon. And on Xiaomi's website, you can also get 50 quid off the already bloody good value Poco F3, so it's now just £279. But again, it does start from 269 over on Amazon. However, you can also get a further 20 quid off from me.com when you spend over £250 using the code 2021BF20. So that'll drive the Poco F3 down to 259 and that is an absolutely spoojalicious price for the old Poco F3. I've actually got my sim in this bad boy again right now, test it out, because it's one of my favourite best value mid-range smartphones of 2021 so far. So stay tuned for an in-depth review of that next week. And it's by a couple of other all right-ish deals on some tech. So for instance, you can grab yourself an LG 48-inch C1 OLED tele box for just a grand. Even better savings on the bigger models as well. But unfortunately, this deal is through very.co.uk. So I hope you've got the patience of 10 Mother Teresas actually waiting for the f***er to arrive. And then there's the Xbox Series S plus a turtle head, head uh, sorry, <laughs> a turtle beach headset. Lols, where's my brain at? And that's for 30 quid off, enough to buy yourself a couple of bottles of scotch and drink yourself stupid while playing Deathloop. Not Deathloop, that's a PS5 and a PC exclusive, uh, while playing Halo and imagining that it's still 2002 and you actually have hair again and some of that youthful spirit that seems to get kicked out of you sometime in your 30s. And that's about it, to be perfectly honest. I did have a scout around some of the other phone manufacturers and some of the, uh, the UK networks as well. They're often, you know, 10 quid off here to 20 quid off here. Nothing that you wouldn't find outside of Black Friday anyway. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. So that's what I think of those deals. However, this is one Black Friday deal I can 100% get behind. A Jura 10-year-old single malt with two glasses so you can double fist it or share it with somebody else, I guess, if you're that way inclined. That's down to just 26 quid on Amazon. So tech news and the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro have been out for just over a month now, but already we've got some hot leaky action on the upcoming Pixel 6a, a more affordable alternative that still boasts a lot of the flagship phone's best features. Unfortunately, while with previous A-series handsets, Google has served up the same brilliant camera tech as the more premium handsets and made cuts in other areas to reach that lower asking price, unfortunately, they seem to have flipped reverse shit for the Google 6A. This mid-range mobile still seems to sport the same comedically massive wide-boy camera chassis, but according to 9to5Google, rather than housing the excellent 50-megapixel sensor from the Pixel 6, the 6A will instead swap that for a 12.2-megapixel Sony IMX363 sensor, as previously used in the Pixel 5 and 5A. And that is a bit of a bum because the Pixel 6 sported a much bigger primary camera sensor which was better suited to low light photography. It's got some really nice natural looking low light shots whereas it looks like the Pixel 6 here is going to have to rely on the ISP smarts just like the Pixel 5 gen. And apparently you can also expect the 6A to come sporting the same ultra wide angle shooter and less than stellar 8 megapixel selfie snapper from the Pixel 6. That is of course if these rumours don't turn out to be a huge steam and sack of monkey dung. In less CAC news it does seem that the Pixel 6A will at least sport the Tensor chipset which means you should get the full range of Android 12 features as found on those flagship phones. 
but the camera hardware situation means this blower probably won't be much of an upgrade over previous A series smartphones, especially as it seems to do away with the headphone jack if these renders are accurate. But don't be too disheartened, this could all turn out to be a putrid pile of pixie poo because brace yourself, sometimes the internet lies to us. We'll have to wait for Google to officially whip out the Pixel 6a to see exactly what we're dealing with. And also in the wonderful world of online leaks, uh, we've got some more information trickling out on the OnePlus 10 Pro, which should be emerging early 2022. According to OnLeaks, the Pro model will sport a 6.7 inch OLED display, Quad HD plus 120Hz refresh. It's going to be powered by a Snapdragon 800 series chipset, most likely the fresh new one that's going to be unveiled by Qualcomm next month. Gonna have a 5,000 milliamp battery, which is an upgrade over the previous gen. And then apart from that, it all sounds vaguely familiar. Uh, got either eight or 12 gigs of RAM, a choice of 128 or 256 gigs of storage, IP68 water and dust resistance, 48 megapixel primary sensor, 50 megapixel ultra wide angle shooter. So yeah, it all sounding very, very familiar indeed. It'll be interesting to see if the, uh, the camera software has changed up much because it doesn't sound like the hardware has. And of course, uh, OnePlus and Oppo have got it together to give us some sort of weird hybrid child of Oxygen OS and Color OS as well. So that'll be very interesting to see. But again, could all turn out to be a whole heap of bollocks. So uh, yeah, take it with a pinch of salt. Anyway, that's as much leaky stuff as my soul could possibly handle right now. So now it's time for the part of the show that's marginally better than scouring the internet for Black Friday deals that don't suck. It's your, your viewer comments. Huzzah. Viewer comments. So let's kick off with Matt who says, another weird and highly entertaining Friday tech watch with the host who's never too far from being totally pissed. Yeah, it's all about finding a balance, my friend. You basically want to be numb enough so the perils of everyday existence don't weigh you down, but also not so completely soused that you can't divulge the latest super arousing technology goings on without dribbling all down yourself. And next up, SJSTU says, I really like what MediaTek are up to lately. I don't think they're that far off from being a genuine Snapdragon and Apple chip alternative. Oh boy, only two questions in and already we are nads deep in hot tech chat. And for anyone who's new to this, we literally can go entire shows without having a single comment that has anything to do with technology. But yeah, I think MediaTek are basically there when it comes to providing hot competition for the likes of Apple and Snapdragon. And sure, their premium uh, flagship chipsets aren't as cutting edge across the board by any means, but they are generally a lot more affordable and they still offer a strong enough everyday experience that even quite demanding users should be able to get enough out of them uh, quite happily. Definitely been impressed by their Dimensity chipsets overall, some, uh, some solid tech there. Uh, do we have more tech chat? We do. AJ says, I was wondering which Android smartwatch is best for using Golf GPS apps. I mean, you don't want to be asking me anything about golf, to be perfectly honest. My wrist action is seriously weak, which is kind of ironic given the amount of porn I smashed through for the multiple lockdowns these past two years. But yeah, the only golf I play myself uh, these days or at all ever is of the crazy variety, preferably pirate, but I will accept dinosaur. However, I do know that the Huawei smartwatches, they have a dedicated golf uh, mode in the exercise tracking fitness shenanigans and uh, tag hua hua. I reviewed one of their watches not so long ago and that had a dedicated golf uh, function feature in it. But those morphos are proper expensive, be warned. I have to see if you can find a good Black Friday deal on the f***ers. Uh, Brent Dog says, anyone who's eaten a Findus Crispy pancake too soon knows that they are indeed hotter than a nuclear reactor core. God, yes. I mean, seriously, those things should come with a bigger health warning slapped on them than a packet of fags. Seriously, eat one of those buggers fresh out of the oven and you'll end up looking like that poor bugger out of Robocop that drove into the toxic sludge. Uh, some more uh, crispy pancake chat here. This is more what I was expecting, rather than all that tech stuff at the start. Don't know what that was. That was all about. Steve LBMK says, a reference to the Finder's crispy pancake has brought back flashbacks of dire lunches and dinners as a teen. God, yes. Uh, see also Bernard Matthews turkey burgers. Oh, lordies. Yeah, those turkey burgers. They wouldn't know a turkey if one bloody came along and sat on them. About 90% reconstituted cardboard and 10% gob to hold them together. A bit more music chat now. Ali says, speaking more on rock and metal, a trip down Prog Lane is the decision I took with King Crimson. And you've got to say, me and Prog don't always get on that well. It's kind of like having a doner kebab after like far too many pints on a Saturday night. Sometimes it's sheer genius, just what you need. Hits a spot that no other slightly warmed up meat products could quite manage. And other times it just hits your stomach like a sack of rocks. That's exactly the same with Prog. And King Crimson, I, I quite like some of their tracks, the ones that actually sound like music. 
uh, but then that'll be immediately followed by 45 seconds of what sounds like somebody shaking some wind chimes while kicking a raccoon in the face. Uh, Metal Fan Jamie is back uh, this week with another comment, says, lucky enough to see Architects this year, the weekend after all restrictions lifted in England, and already got tickets for Enter Shikari and Beartooth Landmarks and Architects. You SOB, I am proper jealous of that one, because that is a proper good liner. And I am Thunderhawk says, if you do Textbook Weekly from Download or Slam Dunk Festival, happy to be your camera. Uh, thank you, mate. That's very kind. I mean, it would be a lot of fun. Be a bit mental. But uh, yeah, now I basically just need a boom operator and I'm all set. Uh, Dean uh, is here with a tech question. He says, which phone manufacturer will use the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 in 2022? Love to your furry friend. Uh, excuse me? I mean, oh, you mean my cat <laughs> who had a star in role in last week's video. Right, okay. That makes more sense. Uh, as for the, uh, the the media tech, what was the question again? <laughs> the Dimensity 9000. So it's slightly thrown by the furry uh, remark. Uh, but it's usually the Chinese manufacturers who obviously jump on board with the media tech stuff. So I expect like some OnePlus and Xiaomi and Oppo and such forth to, uh, to leap on that and use that for some of the higher tier smartphones next year. Let's stick with the subject of mobile chipsets. Sora says, I hope what MediaTek said is true, but also we should wait for seeing what Qualcomm and Samsung are offering in the coming year. Exodus is coming with RDNA 2, and Qualcomm should fix the issues that were presented on the Snapdragon 888. I mean, I gotta admit, I was already pretty skeptical on Exodus chipsets uh, before the 2100, which powered the S21 smartphones. A lot of promises were made by Samsung. And what did we get? Well, the S21 had crappy battery life and less than stellar game and performance. So we're not expecting great things out of the next Exodus platform, but I would love to be proved wrong. I'd love them to absolutely smash it with just the best performance, incredible longevity, all that. That would make me a very happy, bold twat. And yeah, Qualcomm, uh, with its heating issues on the flip side, one of the few uh, problems that didn't plague that Exodus 2100 chipset. If they can sort it out, so yeah, the, the next 800 series chipset uh, can provide that excellent performance, but also not get hotter than a Finless Crispy Pancake, then yeah, we'd be, uh, we'd be on to a serious winner. Uh, now, moving on from tech chat to anime uh, gossip. Uh, so Jihavi says, some good anime this season. Uh, Haike... Monogatari Miruku-chan. Uh, you know what, I'm just gonna go ahead and just flash up the names of these animes right here so I don't look quite so much of an uneducated cretin. And also add into the list, Otaku Ainjuru says, currently watching Working, exclamation mark, or maybe called Wagnaria in other countries. Yeah, I really need to read up on all this shit because I'm way behind when it comes to uh, fresh anime series. I have heard of uh, Miruku-chan, Though that sounds absolutely batshit mental, exactly my kind of thing. Sounds like your sort of standard melodramatic school drama thing, except that apparently the protagonist can see these horrific deformed ghosts wherever she goes. It's exactly my sort of level of mental. Um, right, next comment. Uh, great, this is going to make me look even more like a clueless British cut. A comment from Hervoje? Hervoje? Uh, yeah, again, I'll, I'll flash that. Sorry for more than the pronunciation. Says, uh, hello from Zadar in Croatia. And yeah, Zadar looks absolutely friggin' stunning from the photos and stuff that I've seen of it. Never made it that far north, unfortunately, up the Dalmatian coast. I've been to a couple of towns around there. Uh, but the most north I've actually been is probably like Kolachep Island, uh, where I basically did a full week of drinking and sleeping back in the day. But yeah, definitely have to add it to the list for the Techspert World Tour. Uh, which is probably, of course, never actually going to happen because I've spent all my money on booze instead. Uh, Miguel says, regarding the Cowboy Bebop adaptation uh, on Netflix, which is live right now, he says, it is very good if you have two bottles of whiskey. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm six episodes in now, I believe it is. And I've got to say, I'm enjoying it, definitely. It probably helps that I set the ball up with my expectation levels. I wasn't expecting much at all. You know, they've got plenty of fan service in there, but they have changed up things enough to actually keep it interesting. If you have watched the original anime series, like, just done it to death like I have because if you follow it too closely then what's even the point of doing it I think the casting's fantastic the direction's pretty solid as well to be fair um, I like how some of the episodes have a unique sort of style to them like the Jet Black episode you've got sort of film noir vibes which sort of suits the grimy detective uh, story quite well and of course it helps that they've got the original composer back to score it as well um, and it's definitely not perfect by any means no Ed so far for, for a start which is a major bummer and uh, some of the episodes could definitely use tighter editing, maybe cut them down to half an hour instead of sort of 45 minutes. But apart from that, you know, I'm quite happy to crack open a tinny, 
lounge on the sofa and smash through a couple episodes of that. But of course, yes, once I finish this series, I'm 100% going to go back and smash through the entire original series because that shit is like crystal meth in anime form. Uh, Warmate Steven says, I'm getting notifications of a boatload of new mod rollers on the way, so that's going to be a week of work. It sure friggin' is. Yeah, these did actually, uh, I got a press release about the Moto G31 and the Moto G200 last week, just as literally I'd finished processing my episode of Textbook Weekly. I could have gone back, of course, and shot a couple of extra bits and inserted them into the episode, but frankly, I couldn't be f***ed. So let's just quickly run through them now. The G200 seems to have almost flagship style specs. It's powered by the Snapdragon 888 Plus chipset, which is only found on a handful of really premium slash gaming smartphones. Uh, you've got a 108 megapixel camera sensor. You've got a 6.8 inch 144 hertz display, although it is IPS rather than OLED, and a 5,000 milliamp battery, all for 400 quid, which is a freaking good price for those kind of specs. It's just so weird and confusing that that is a G series smartphone, because I would expect that to be an edge handset, they're the more all the flagship smartphones, whereas G series you tend to associate with strong everyday performance and everything for around sort of 200 pounds ish. And then Motorola also launched the Moto G31, which actually does have an OLED screen, slightly confusingly. It's a 6.4 inch 60 hertz panel, but this time the power is provided by a MediaTek Helio G85 chipset. Got a 50 megapixel primary camera sensor, 5000 milliamp battery again, and this one's only 170 quid, which again, great price, especially for an OLED smartphone. And anyhow, they're both coming in December, so stay tuned for more on those bad boys. I'm hoping to get my mitts on the G31, uh, just a week or two into December, the G200 might come slightly after that. And next up, Jim says the theme tune to Pole Position uh, was awesome too. Fuck yes, Pole Position. Absolute stone cold banger of a power anthem that was right there. Brilliant stuff. Uh, next up, Stuart says, oh, are we talking 80s games now? Yes, always, of course. Techspert, the home for cut and edge tech and games chat. Uh, Ye are Kung Fu and Bruce Lee Specky games were the best devs. Oh my god, mate, ye are kung fucking foo. God, yes, I absolutely adored the hell out of that game. I played it so much that I think my Spectrum keyboard basically just imploded. Absolutely loved it. I don't think I ever completed it, unfortunately. I, I seem to recall I made it to the uh, the pole guy, whatever they were called, uh, every single time and then just got my face twatted off. I also love how uh, the, the, ma the main dude who was on the box art was blatantly Bruce Lee, but obviously they couldn't be asked to pay the licensing fee or whatever, so hence it was just ye are kung fu. And anyway, Jesus, I really better make this the last comment because I've gone way over time as usual. Uh, T-Rex says, the Mackums of the Geordies I know are still wearing shorts in November. Yeah, that was me back in the day, believe it or not. I remember occasionally uh, for a night out down the quayside, I might upgrade from a short sleeve shirt to a long sleeve shirt if it was December, uh, but only if it was really cold enough to freeze the bollocks off a polar bear. And the key to it, of course, as with anything in the Northeast, is just alcohol. You know, you, you don't want to just drink enough to get a beer jacket on. You want to get a few triple vodkas down your throat as well and get a full-on pair of beer trousers. But anyway, thank you so much to everyone who commented last week. Again, fantastic uh, going through all of those. Great fun. Uh, please do smash your comments down below and we'll try and hammer our way through as many of those as possible next week. Spur her eking of which, there seems to be, again, bugger all in my calendar for next week, but I'm sure that will all fall on its arse soon enough. There's always something going on. Got plenty of hot tech shenanigans to bring your way, including uh, my long-term review of the Poco F3. Been uh, back on this bad boy, seeing how it's holding up over time. One of my favourite budget-friendly smartphones of the year. It's not really budget, of course. It is more of a mid-range smartphone, but certainly as far as value for money goes, you can't get much better than this bad boy. And I've also got the Huawei Nova 9 in, so be checking that out. I've been testing out uh, some of the best budget true wireless earbuds that you can grab on the likes of Amazon right now, so I'll be bringing you my reviews of those. And of course, come join me, as always, next Friday at noon, crack open a tinny and just watch us bang on about tech stuff and 80s computer games and all that great stuff once again. So have a fun bloody tastic weekend, remember not to spunk all of your cash on cheap tat on the internet and I'll hopefully see you next week. Love you lots, bye! Paw position!